Welcome, folks. I want to describe the kernel of a homomorphism between two groups. So if capital G and capital H are two groups and phi is a homomorphism between them, then the kernel of this homomorphism is the set of all inputs, little g in our first group, that under our homomorphism get mapped to the identity in H, our second group. So let's do a simple example. We had this map from Z mod 4Z to Z mod 2Z, which was de defined by J got mapped to J mod 2. So in other words, 0 got mapped to 0 mod 2, which is 0. 2 got mapped to 2 mod 2, which is 0. 1 got mapped to 1 mod 2, which is 1. And 3 got mapped to 3 mod 2, which is 1. So the identity in this output group is zero. So the kernel is all things that get squashed down onto the identity. So the kernel is zero and two. Although if I have any, if there's any justice in the world, they should be in red to, to match our picture. So the kernel will always be a subgroup. The kernel forms a subgroup here that's isomorphic to Z mod 2Z. Furthermore, the kernel will always be a normal subgroup, if you know what that means. That will allow you to take a group and mod out by the kernel, whatever that means. And when you take a group and mod out by the kernel, you'll always get um, a new group which is isomorphic to the image of the homomorphism. That's a pretty fancy concept that we'll see more of later. But for right now, let's go through some example group homomorphisms and find their kernels and just observe that the kernels are always subgroups of the input group. All right, so previously we saw this map from Z mod 2Z to Z mod 4Z that mapped input J to two times J. So it maps zero to zero and one to two and one and three don't get hit. So let's find the kernel the kernel phi is just all things that get mapped to the identity in Z mod 4Z. So it's just zero. Zero is the only thing that get maps to the identity. And this is a subgroup, it's a trivial subgroup. It has just a single element, the identity and nothing else. All right. For any integer n, you can form a group homomorphism by mapping the integers to the integers mod n, just by taking input j and map it to j mod n. Here's a picture where I take the integers and map them to z mod 3z. Okay, so in this picture, the kernel of phi, let's say n is three, so I'm mapping to z mod 3z. In this picture, you can see that the kernel is, is um, all things that are divisible by three. So dot, 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 negative six, negative three, zero, three, six, nine, etc. Okay. But more generally, the kernel of phi will just be NZ all things, all integers that are divisible by n. And that is a subgroup of the integers, right? nz, all things divisible by, by n, is a subgroup of the integers. Okay, we considered this homomorphism where we map the symmetric group permutations to z mod 2z by mapping a permutation to zero if it was even and to one if it was odd. This is a homomorphism 
Its kernel is all things that map to the identity in Zima2z. So all things that map to zero. And that's just the alternating group, the group of even permutations. And the alternating group is a subgroup of um, the symmetric group, just because when you combine two even permutations, you get another even permutation. We considered this example homomorphism where we map the symmetries of the um, n-sided polygon to z mod 2z, where we mapped to zero if the symmetry was a rotation and we mapped to one if it was a flip. So the kernel of phi is all things that map to um, zero. So it's all rotations. Um, so this is the subgroup of rotational symmetries. So, you know, let's say n was four. So I was looking at the symmetries of the square. We have these flips, but those get mapped to one. The kernel is the things that get mapped to zero and we map all rotations to zero, okay? That forms a homomorphism, and its kernel is just a subgroup of rotational symmetries. All right, we considered this example where we map from the reals under non-zero reals under multiplication to the non-zero reals under multiplication, where we mapped x to x squared. We checked that it was a homomorphism. What's its kernel? The kernel is all things that map to the identity. The identity under multiplication is one. So the kernel is just the set of all x such that, you know, phi of x is equal to the identity or one. Or in other words, it's the set of all x such that x squared is equal to one. So what are the non-zero reals that you can square and get one, that's just negative one and one, right? So that's the kernel, negative one and one. And that indeed, that indeed forms a, forms a subgroup, right? Negative one and one form a subgroup under multiplication. They form a subgroup isomorphic to Z mod two Z, right? Here's the multiplication table. That subgroup is isomorphic to Z mod two Z. So we have this homomorphism. It has a kernel. These two elements get mapped to the identity one and they form a subgroup. It's a subgroup that looks like Z mod two Z sitting inside this much larger group. Last example, um, we consider this homomorphism that takes two by two matrices with non-zero determinant to the uh, non-zero reals just by taking a matrix to its determinant. The kernel of this is gonna be all matrices with determinant one. And that forms a subgroup called the special linear group inside this larger group of, of all um, invertible matrices called the general linear group. All right, so in summary, the kernel of a homomorphism is all of the elements in the input group that get mapped to the identity and it forms a subgroup of the input group, which is furthermore a normal subgroup. Any public questions? Thanks.